Foot Clan, we have a huge episode today, Fantasy Football MVP Show. We have special guests on the show today sharing their fantasy MVP picks. We share ours. Make sure you put yours in the comment. Like, subscribe, enjoy the show. The Fantasy Footballer Studio is brought to you by Samsung Galaxy. Visit Samsung.com to learn more. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Tremendous. He's Only back. took a month. <laughs> Just a month off the calendar. <laughs> welcome into the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. I am very excited for the next time, like, someone on, on Andy's fantasy team gets, like, an, an injury and they miss two weeks. And he's like, what's going on? Get back on the field. And then we'll oh, remind right. him, it took you a month to get your voice back. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> facts are facts, Mike. That's true. <laughs> Please remind me of that. Keep me humble. Will um, do. But also, no, don't do that. Uh, Mike Wright, Jason Moore, Andy Holloway, the deucers in the building. All of them. Wow. Oh, yeah. Full strength. Back at it. It's a big show. We even got an big extra loser show. in the house today. Oh, we do. don't do that. Oh, what an idiot. Don't do that. That's true. We do have our uh, video yeah. master, Brian Ketron, in the house. Because we, we have a live show here in Phoenix on Saturday. That so, is fortunate. That is. So if you're coming out for that, we look forward to seeing you. And, I mean, bold predictions. Yeah. So that show will come out uh as a podcast on Tuesday. That is correct. Okay. And no show on Labor Day. That is also correct. A break from our labors. I will be sleeping in. Yeah. For the, the last time for <laughs> whatever it is, five months. Also the first time this year <laughs> and the last time this year. Uh, today is a very exciting episode. The Fantasy MVP Show. Uh, we have some special guests on the show today sharing their fantasy football MVP picks for the upcoming 2022 season. We have our three picks on the show today. Uh, I've seen people asking for this episode. Are you doing it again? Yeah, yep. it's here right now. What I love about this show is, you know, getting getting some outside perspective. I mean, we're we live in the fantasy footballers universe. There's three of us who have our own individual uh, opinions here. But I so yesterday. I jumped on – CBS does a live stream every year, a draft-a-thon. They raise money for St. Jude. It's incredible. So I jumped on uh, – me and Jake Seeley jumped on and did a it did a little spot there. And it was so wild to enter their universe and what ADP is to them because it was so different. The way that we were talking about Your some of Your bubble was uh, – you broke out of yes, it? Yes, and like the way – and ADP is everything. During the fantasy draft season, it, ADP dictates so much. And to go on and like, because I'm talking about how much I like Cortland Sutton and Adam Azer's like, oh yeah, I, I mean, basically every third round I draft him. I'm like, whoa, third third round? Like, I'm all in on Cortland Sutton, so I take him in the fourth because that's a round early. And it's like in their ecosystem, it's it's just fascinating once our worlds finally do collide to see that there are differences in the way that people are thinking about things. Yeah, and I think that's why you got to get your guy. <laughs> yeah, sure. sometimes you cannot bank on those uh, universes meeting uh, for your draft. Quick question of the day comes in from uh, Vitalia, Vitalia, Vitali in Atlanta. Got it. There we go. Uh, haven't heard much about Kareem Hunt. How do you foresee his season and usage? Is he a RB three or an every week flex starter? Would love more insight on Kareem Hunt. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that the reality is the Browns offense is going to start slowly. And, yes, I just heard it. I just heard the reality is. Now, every time I say oh, the reality no. is, oh, no. I'm going to think of that video, <laughs> which is much must-watch TV on, on Twitter if you haven't seen it. Um, the Browns offense does not project to get off to a strong start, <laughs> right? So, you you don't think of the Browns as a high-powered offense the way that you might think of 
the Packers or the Cowboys, but Kareem Hunt is in a somewhat similar role to an A.J. Dillon or yes. a Tony Pollard who are drafted so much higher. If you look at Kareem Hunt, what he's done on the field is pretty much just always be good. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was the running. He was a top 10 running back last year before he went down to injury in week seven, and he finished the year prior as a top 10 fantasy running back in half PPR. So I think he is a value where he's going, but his upside is capped by Jacoby Brissett. Yeah, I agree with you. I, he's a very difficult player to start from an emotional standpoint. I mean, this is like a roller coaster where you are, you know, you're clicking up the roller coaster for the entire first half of the game with no thrills of any kind. And a lot of the times, Kareem Hunt needs to take advantage of his limited, uh, you know, red zone, goal line work, has to get in the end zone, but he always seems to get it done. It's just a bumpier ride than a traditional starter, right? He's a player that if I go wide receiver heavy, if that's how the draft falls to me, I love, love getting Kareem Hunt as, uh, like, I mean, if you go real heavy, even you're running back too because you're so stacked at the other positions. I think Kareem can fit in there perfectly. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. All right, we've got some news for you. Russell Wilson Unlimited. got paid five year $245 million extension 165 guaranteed locked down locked up Denver Broncos quarterback for the foreseeable future that's right yeah you, you knew it was coming it's just uh done now so he'll be turning 34 here in a couple months so you have I mean this this is it this is Russell Wilson finishing his career as a Denver Bronco Brian Robinson was placed on the NFI list, the reserve list. He'll miss the four, the, the first four weeks at a minimum. Right. Uh, some time to recover. We'll see what happens going into week five. Irv Smith Jr. expected to be ready for week one after his thumb injury. Uh, says he is getting back into the groove of things. Yeah, he he mentioned that he wants to get back into football shape. Obviously, for some reason, with his broken thumb, he couldn't run. Or I don't know why he, he was is probably not, running. Right, but I feel like you should be in football shape. That being said, he is catching passes already, and he is now draftable. He's been kind of off my board over the last couple months, a player that I liked. I think that they're going to utilize him more in this system, and he's talented. He, he was a, a top 12 pick going into last season, and then he missed it with the uh, MCL, was it? No, he had a meniscus. Ah. Is that not the MCL? Meniscus is no. different. The M does not stand for meniscus. No, it does not. Amazing. Because it's not a ligament. Yeah. It's I think not it's, the meniscus cruciate ligament. Uh, not, not, a, <laughs> not a doctor, but I think it's just a little... It's just a little niscus. Yeah. Ah. You know. Yeah, a mini yeah. one. A mini And niscus. I know that if you tear it, niscus. you can either trim it mm -hmm. yeah. mm. and get back on the field. Zach or, Wilson style. Or fully repair. It's just a little membrane, maybe. Just, why does it know. need a... <laughs> I don't yeah. know. It's how, how, I I always love that the trimming like well, how, how is you, that a good it's got thing? Too much? Yeah, it's like oh, you, too much niscus. You you cut to the left too hard, and you're now you've got a lot of you you grow niscus. some. Yeah, <laughs> and it's got to get trimmed. You need it to be mini again. <laughs> this is a real eye opening. This kind of like our conversation on some of the organs that yeah. we had a while Look, back. We we know what we're talking about. Uh, <laughs> and people that know what they're talking about always announce that. Yeah. Um, Rondale Moore dealing with an undisclosed injury. Thank goodness it's undisclosed because if they disclosed it, we'd be breaking it down right now. But I mean, we can guess. <laughs> it's a niscus. Um, Cliff says it'll be a close call for week one. Zach Ertz also a close call for week one. This was kind of fresh news uh, a day ago. We already don't have DeAndre Hopkins. We probably don't have Antoine Wesley who filled in for DeAndre Hopkins last year. You don't have Christian Kirk. You, I, I, I read you loud and clear. I mean, this is it's Andy Isabella time. Oh, he made the fifty. What about Greg Dorch? What a Dorch! Um, he is. <laughs> yeah, no, he is. It's his family name, oh, Jason. Gosh. That's a, his family name. He's a Dorch. I mean, <laughs> I'm just spewing but facts. But you're saying it with like a, a real like negative a, inflection. No, he's like a super Dorch. <laughs> I mean, the guy's name is Dorch. This know. isn't on me. It's just an abrasive name. It hits hard. It does. Like a 
punch in the dorch. <laughs> oh, um, yeah. Rondale Moore dealing with an undisclosed injury. Zach Ertz, if he's not on the field, this is a problem. The, the bigger issue is Rondale Moore is somebody that we've been saying, grab with your last pick, see the result of week one, maybe way more involved in the offense. If he doesn't play week one, uh, yes, you can throw him on the IR, but you're going to go into week two with the biggest waiver wire grab of them all, uh, and you're going to need roster spots. It's just going to be a very difficult situation. I hope he's out there because I want to see what they have. Yeah in store i do as well but as of this moment i assume he will not be playing week one solely based on the fact that cliff kingsbury called out both dorch and andy isabella as being more involved in week one in response to questions about rondale moore and antoine wesley uh, potentially being gone that's not just a trick for the kansas city chiefs well, to maybe like let up well we all know that Leadership of teams, coaches, general managers, they don't ever lie. So we That's need to trust true. what That's they're saying true. because the 49ers, John Lynch, <laughs> he's come out. He oh, said, man. you know, Trey Sermon's been one of the very best players at camp. Mm -hmm. And then yesterday, the 49ers waved Trey Sermon. He's gone. Unbelievable. Just, you cannot trust anything out of San Francisco. Beat writers, coaches. The field conditions? It's my understanding Jimmy Garoppolo is the starter now. <laughs> so this is... Trey Lance has been released. Is right, that what you yeah, said? Yeah. No, but Trey Sermon, third-round pick. This is madness. And you also lost Michael Hasty in the backfield. So now you have an, an you know Elijah Mitchell, Jeff Wilson, um, uh, Tyrion Davis-Price, and uh, a player that, Jason, you've wanted to bring up, yeah, Jordan Mason. Jordan Mason is an undrafted free agent rookie. This, just like they like him. This, exactly. Just like, just like they, uh, those Shanahans love to get the credit for finding the diamond in the rough. He's not a speed guy, um, which is not usually what works in the Shanahan system, so mm -hmm. it's worth you know noting that. But he was dominant throughout the preseason. He earned this spot over those other guys. They released Jamichael Hasty. Uh, and Trey Sermon, and that's because Jordan Mason is able to get on the field and play. It's wild. It always is. We're on six straight years of a different fantasy football leader in the running back room for San Francisco. So even though right now it seems really nice for Elijah Mitchell, I do think that the it's a very – he's walking on thin ice because one more injury for to Elijah Mitchell – and you will have like a five pack in less than a year, and you may look at more committee backfield or somebody else having more opportunity. The the when they when they drafted Ty Davis Price, it was said it because they wanted someone who could withstand the carries, and they felt like their smaller guys were getting injured more often. Jordan Mason also a bigger body back, and it's worth saying. I mean, we always talk about the speed, right? You've you've loved you know Raheem Mostert in that backfield. Maybe they're learning that speed. This this these speedy guys also get really hurt in this system. I mean, coaches do change. We've talked about Sean McVay looking at his backfield differently with Daryl Henderson and Cam Akers. The day may come where Kyle Shanahan realizes, yeah, I like the speed guys, but they're always off the field. Sure, but when if he tries to make that change, will it be effective? Probably. Like I feel Shanahan's know how to run the ball. I uh, yeah, I still feel pretty confident in Elijah Mitchell like last year it, I mean injuries notwithstanding of course it was gonna be Mostert last year but he went out for the season in week one so I, I think that Elijah Mitchell still is worth the the chance and feels a little bit more secure you feel safer with Penny or Mitchell uh oof. Prob probably Mitchell the tricky part about Elijah Mitchell is he has to be what he was last year when he played from a volume standpoint because he doesn't catch passes, and they're going to have other Correct. players doing that. Uh, but if he hits, if he stays healthy, he's going to be great. Texans release Royce Freeman right after Marlon Mack, uh, Damian Pierce. That's not going to help the Damian Pierce hype. Nothing can stop it, Mike. <laughs> I know. Uh, oxygen comes second. So, uh, Any other news, Brooksy? You got anything for me? No, sir. No breaking uh, 49er releases. No, sir. Or injuries. Okay, good. I wonder good. if Trey Sermon will clear waivers or get picked up. It's a really good question. Yeah, Marlon Mack didn't. Uh, nobody came after Marlon Mack. He ended up back on the practice squad for the Texans. That was oh, today's. This, there oh, there, is, there is uh, big news. Josh Rosen uh, was re-signed by the Browns on the practice squad. So thank goodness he still has a job. He's just hanging That's on. That's great. <laughs> 
That's great. Good for you, Josh. Uh, another Josh, Josh Gordon, also on the practice squad for the Titans. So he's hanging on as well. Ooh. The Josh is man. Uh, last few days in the league. That was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. Who's your fantasy MVP? And that's a genuine question. Like if you're watching on YouTube, yeah. leave your MVP in the comments. I want to see some of the names that are most popular right now. Um, we've had the privilege of bringing on a number of wise individuals onto today's show. So we'll share their MVPs with you, or rather they will. Yes. And then we will share ours at the end of the show. I think next year we got to fly them all in, have them in studio, mm. you know, just make it a party. That's not we'll, in the we'll, budget. We'll workshop it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'd maybe like, you fly to them. <laughs> record and them and record in the segment. Yeah, okay. I like your really expensive idea. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's really nice. Uh, let's begin with Josh Norris, the head of content strategy and production at Underdog Fantasy. We love Josh. And he's got an MVP for us. When Mike reached out for my fantasy MVP, dog, there's only one man I can pick. I'm not going to say he's in the top 20. He's not in the top 50. Heck, we're looking all the way outside the top 100 overall in ADP. Wide receiver 55. 55. His name is Joshua <laughs> Palmer, Los Angeles Chargers. Since we spoke about him back in June, he's climbed 48 spots on underdog. He has two easy outs for having a massive ceiling in 2022. The first one is outright winning the wide receiver three job with the Los Angeles Chargers. Check. He's already done that after splitting it with Jalen Guyton last year. Second, what happens if Mike Williams misses an extended period of time? What happens if Keen Allen misses an extended period of time? One of those starting two wide receiver jobs and two wide receiver sets is, is wide open. We already saw what happened last year. He started on the outside when Williams was out. He started in the slot when Keenan Allen was out. Again, this is a top five passing offense in the league, and it absolutely stands out that since drafting Mike Williams in the top 10, this team has only spent one day one or day two pick on a wide receiver. His name is Joshua Palmer. He can win down the field. He can win the slot. He's flexible. He's nimble. And man, he's attached to Justin Herbert. Let's boogie. Let's draft him as wide receiver 55. Joshua, <laughs> Joshua <laughs> Norris going with Joshua Palmer. I, I dig it, man. You know, if you look just over the, the kind of the, the back half of the season, he, he was very involved, you know, against the Giants, 23% of the targets. Uh, and then the final three games, he was averaging about 16% of the targets. If he is truly the wide receiver three, you know, we just uh, talked about some undrafted gems that you can throw on your bench. If you're not – you don't like your flyer heading into week one, I think that Josh Palmer is a is a really interesting bet to make uh, to see how involved will he be as the three. And like Josh said – should one of those other wide receivers miss time, Palmer, massive upgrade. I, I think this is a perfect pick coming from Josh Norris because where I like Josh Palmer is on underdog. And, you know, when when, you, <laughs> when you're doing these right. drafts that are 18 rounds deep and you don't have to make the start-sit decisions, you can get the big random touchdown. You can hold on to the player, and if an injury comes in week three or week four or and then again, you know, later in the season, you get all of his good uh, games. And – I think all three of us here really like the talent of Josh Palmer. He's yes. like he passes the eyeball test. He looks like a good wide receiver. I think he could step up in the opportunity. In a home redraft league, I'm a little bit more hesitant to draft him just because I feel like he's going to sit on my bench. The wide receiver three role there, I don't know if that is as valuable as some other systems when you've got Austin Eckler really being the third target. Yeah, there's some other names out there in that three role that you kind of you never know exactly when you can count on them, and they're going to have games. You know, Tyler Boyd's going to have his games. KJ Osborne's going to have games. Josh Palmer will too, but he does. Hey, somebody asked on the Spotify Live show yesterday, see the best like wide receiver insurance policy. One of the, I mean, you sure. want those. You would love the number three on all the top five passing offenses. Um, so I like Palmer. I just, you know, I feel like an injury has to happen for him to be MVP. Just I would remember bet on. Mike Williams getting injured yeah. because he falls from about 20 feet every time yeah, he, he catches just, the he's ball. He's like a, off the skyscraper. Like, Palmer is a third round pick going into his second year. So, I mean, like, should I get Keenan and, and Mike Williams are there, but he, the, 
those are the the variables that we want to look for for wide receivers that can take a really really big step all right who do we have up next you sam hoppin from four for four let's hear that fantasy mvp Hey ballers, this is Sam Hoppin of 4 for 4. Truly honored to be a part of this show and share my fantasy MVP for this season of Jalen Hurts. Even though he's being drafted around the 6th round, there is still room for upside and for him to finish as the QB1 overall. Last year, Hurts was the quarterback 7 on a points per game basis and the Eagles brought in outstanding receiver AJ Brown this offseason to help improve Hurts' passing efficiency. Meanwhile, he has Devonta Smith entering his second year with the team, who is one of the better wide receiver twos in the league. And not to mention, this will be his second year in the Nick Sirianni system, which will only help Hurts in his development. And if Hurts doesn't progress passing the ball, he has an elite floor and elite ceiling because of his rushing. He got 5.1 carries per game last year, and his 52.9 rushing yards per game ranked second among quarterbacks in 2021. Jalen Hurts is my pick for fantasy MVP for the 2022 season. How do you, you know feel? I love How do you it. feel about that, Jason? Uh, I love it. He's <laughs> one of my my guys, and I, you know, one of the things that I've realized recently, you know, it's it's kind of common sense. But when you think about AJ Brown on the field, it's not just helping Jalen Hurts. Like, oh, he's got a good target to throw to. It opens up everything for this offense. I mean, the defense is going to be focused on on him, his scrambling ability. Bigger, better plays when, you know, the the defense is keyed in on other wide receivers. And we forget that he had an ankle injury last year. He was averaging over 10 rushing attempts a game. And he was, I think, the quarterback two or three up until that ankle injury, which was pretty deep in the season. When he came back, he only averaged five attempts, uh, rushing attempts a game and wasn't very valuable for fantasy those last three starts. Yeah, and I don't think the team has a goal of – putting him out there and and running the ball as much as he had in the past he it's going to be better for him to have AJ Brown Devontae Smith in year two a healthy Dallas Goddard these options to throw the ball to and, and look at what Ryan Tannehill was able to accomplish for fantasy with a healthy AJ Brown really just one talented pass catching option on the Tennessee offense that was predicated on the run and I think we're going to see a run based offense that takes advantage of mismatches and really you know, every play action pass may be to AJ Brown. He's going to get targeted a ton. All right, our next MVP pick, Samantha Praviti from Fantasy uh sorry, from the Action Network, an analyst over there with the an MVP pick. Hey, what's up, guys? It is Samantha Praviti from the Action Network here, and my fantasy MVP this season is going to be Cortland Sutton. Look, we have spent months agonizing over Sutton versus Judy, and their ADPs reflect that a lot of people view them as pretty close. However, I have spoken to Broncos insiders Ben Albright and Ryan Edwards, who say that those two have no business being drafted near each other, and there is one clear number one, and it is Sutton. He has built a super strong rapport with new quarterback Russell Wilson, who will be the best QB he's ever played with. He had that 1,100-yard season back in 2019 and has been unlucky since then since with injuries. Judy, on the other hand, is someone that I so badly want to work out simply because of his potential, but my confidence in him is really tied to his college career, which we are now multiple seasons removed from at this point. Judy went before Sutton in one of my drafts this weekend, which is absolutely bonkers to me. I love Sutton as my MVP, and I predict he will finish top 12 at the position this year for fantasy. So I see what you did here, Mike. You're finding people that are really backing up the My Guys picks for you and Jason. Uh, it certainly seems like that, uh, Ed, but this was not the case. <laughs> These people were approached. They said, hey, I want your MVP. That can be anything. Like It could be a sleeper. Uh, an early round player that you have full confidence in, a value pick, and I I can't help it that we just brought on incredibly intelligent people right. who have done their work and realized that Jalen Hurts and Cortland Sutton are elite players that should be drafted everywhere you possibly can. Let me bring something up about Judy and Sutton that came up during the Fantasy Time Machine show. I saw it in a lot of comments and people's thoughts. A lot of shock that Sutton wasn't the, the, the Cooper Cup, the Cooper Cup selection for you. I've also seen a lot of people throw Judy into that category, looking at where he's being drafted, change of quarterback, bunch of talent. Is this the year that Jerry Judy can make the Cooper Cup type of leap? You know, Samantha makes some really strong points here. 
along with the inside information yeah, from those that, around the team. That's a part I really like. But one of them being that, you know, it's really the hype for Judy is about his collegiate production and what you thought he could be at the NFL level. We have not seen it at the NFL level yet. We have with Cortland Sutton. So that is a reason for there to be a disparity in where they're being drafted. Yeah, ironically, Cort Cortland Sutton was my Cooper Cup pick, but then we looked at we, – yeah. we, we had all of our like MVP picks. We had just talked about them, so I, I pivoted. But Sutton's going to dominate this year. All right, we're going to take a super quick break and back with some more MVPs. We're back with some more MVP picks. We're moving on to Troy King, content creator over at Football Guys and the FF Playbook. What's up, y'all? It's your boy, Troy King, a.k.a. T-King Mode. And my fantasy MVP for the 2022 season is Cole Komet. Now, I know the Bears are gross, disgusting, and all that, but hear me <laughs> out. Cole Komet last year saw 93 targets and didn't score a single touchdown. All right, if anyone's a candidate for positive regression, it's Cole Komet. And also, just look around. He's a tight end. There's not a lot of tight ends that you can rely on that are getting that type of target share. If you're not Travis Kelsey or if you're not Mark Andrews, etc., you can get Cole Komet so late in your drafts. You can get him in the ninth, tenth round of your fantasy drafts. That's the type of tight end that you want to get where you don't have to pay up and you can focus on the other positions. Also, last year, he was second in the team in targets. He was eighth among all tight ends in targets, and he was sixth in deep targets. So for me, Cole Komet is the guy that you want to target late in your draft, stock up on the other positions early, get yourself at Cole Komet later. Because, look, who else do the Bears have? It's Cole Komet and Darnell Mooney. The other wide receiver positions on the team is just not great, right? You got Ryan Pringle, Equinemia St. Brown. Justin Fields is no one to throw to. I don't think the Bears are going to be good, but I am expecting them to have to throw a lot, and I'm expecting Cole Komet to receive a lot of targets. That's my fantasy MVP. Well, here's my question, my follow-up, because well, we all like Cole Komet. First off, uh, Troy, check your email. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, Cole Komet, I, I think we all love grabbing him late. In fact, I'll share this with you. I was making some listener league trade uh, discussions oh. built around the kind of concept of cashing in on massive value on a top tier tight end in a okay. deal to pick up another position and then come back with Cole Komet. Who do you have? Darren Waller. Okay. okay. So there was there was a trade offer around that because I do believe in the upside of Cole Komet. But here's the simple follow up to what Troy said: Where does Cole Komet have to finish? To be what he said. Where did what fantasy finish does Cole Komet have to hit to be a fantasy MVP as Troy is projecting? I think he needs to be in the top five at tight end. If you are um, you know, tight end eight, nine, ten, that's you you that's great. Your resume says top ten tight end. Right. But it's usually pretty irrelevant. Those guys are still streaming options that you're gonna play a matchup and you're gonna be disappointed more often than you're not like when Trey Burton was exactly a, yeah. was a horrible disappointment, but ended up at ten or something. I think he was seven. Yeah, I mean <laughs> so it was a disaster. That's a perfect example. I do think that Cole Komet can finish as a top five tight end this year, and he is far and away the he's the tight end that I'm targeting in the double digit rounds in most of my drafts. Yeah, along with like David and Joku, we've talked about him. Mm -hmm. Uh, ironic, though, that Cole Komet plays on the same team that the Trey Boo Boo uh, yes. breakout experience was going to happen with. Uh, we're moving on to Ian Harditz from uh, the PFF Fantasy Football Podcast. Hello, my name is Ian Harditz of Pro Football Focus, and I'm here to tell you about Rondale Moore being one of the best values ahead of the 2022 NFL season. Currently priced as the wide receiver 56 off the board, Rondale is my wide receiver 45, which I get it, not the biggest difference in the world, but people, we're talking about someone regularly going into the mid-double-digit rounds of fantasy drafts of most shapes and sizes that has a chance to be Kyler's 1A, B, C option throughout the duration of the season. The reason why DeAndre Hopkins fantasy managers really weren't all that thrilled at the beginning of last year, even before he got injured, 
was the fact that Kyler was spreading things around so evenly. And now Rondale Moore profiles as the starting slot receiver and what's expected to be another highly productive Arizona Cardinals offense. Christian Kirk, out of the picture. Chase Edmonds, out of the picture. And honestly, when you start to look at who the Cardinals have available, Rondale Moore makes a lot of sense to fit both those roles. Cliff Kingsbury has talked about uh, Rondale Moore being the leading candidate to replace Christian Kirk. Not just the leading candidate, the replacement for Christian Kirk before the Hollywood Brown trade. After the Hollywood Brown trade, Man, Rondale Moore is a starting slot receiver for the Cardinals. Now, what's going to happen after DeAndre Hopkins comes back from his suspension? Unfortunately, remains a bit of an unknown. But when Rondale Moore is going this late with legit triple-digit target upside on top of potentially 20 to 25 well-schemed gadgety rush attempts, Rondale Moore is a player being priced far closer to his floor than his ceiling at this moment. Well, I, it's an interesting name to bring up, but Jason, I'm sure you take issue with well-schemed rush attempts. Oh, yeah, because Cliff doesn't know how to do that. Um, <laughs> uh, but he'll, yeah. he'll make sure everyone sees it coming. This is a lot like Palmer to me, where except for if you told me that Mike Williams had a six-game suspension. Sure, yeah. Because you have Hollywood and, and Hopkins that are going to be primary targets in the offense, and Rondale will have more opportunities this year obviously needs to finish far ahead of wide receiver 45 to be a true MVP candidate. Yeah, I mean, he is a more explosive athlete than Palmer is, and if he inherits that Christian Kirk role, he'll be outstanding. Rondale was one of my favorite late-round targets. Now with the question marks around week one, I'm a little bit more hesitant, but if you have an IR spot in your league and you can basically have him active week one and see what you have or if he's inactive you can throw him on your IR and grab another week one shot maybe a backup running back for the injury risk of of week one I I, I still will grab Rondale in IR leagues all right uh I have to make a confession here don't we don't have the best kind of like internet security and things of that sort so we did have somebody kind of break into <laughs> the show doc here okay uh, Kyle Borgannoni, our very own, sharing his fantasy MVP pick, professional deucer, of course, and the host of the Fantasy Footballers DFS podcast, which if you play daily fantasy or you dabble in props, mm -hmm. you're not going to find two smarter people talking about these topics than Kyle Borgannoni and Matthew Betts, who host that show. So please avail yourself of that. Um, but I will proceed with mocking Kyle here soon after his oh, MVP of course, pick. Of course. Listen, it ain't easy being cheesy, but if your fantasy league rewards you for rostering players who are pure cheese puffs, then let's ride. Yes, I'm talking about Russell Wilson as my pick for fantasy MVP in 2022. The guy's cooked up top 10 QB finishes for his career on the reg, but he's being drafted at his floor at QB9. Russell Wilson's the fantasy MVP because he elevates all the Broncos' fantasy options around him. Cortland Sutton, Jerry Judy, Javante Williams all can thank the good Lord for Russell Wilson. <laughs> and lastly, Nathaniel Hackett was brought over to be the coach and let Russ do his thing. As the Packers OC, yes. Green Bay averaged 35 pass attempts per game. Pete Carroll only allowed Russ to do that in just a quarter of his games. In games where Russell Wilson has attempted at least 35 pass attempts, he's average 280 and two. So book it. Russ Wilson, league MVP, fantasy MVP. <laughs> That's right. Kyle. Okay, first of all. That was a recording, Kyle. You can edit that. You can record it over. And you're here. You know we won't let this go. We will drive that bus over you. Well, first of all, I, I'm just – the, I didn't even realize the comedy of having a recording of Kyle while you sit here in the studio. You could have shared all of that. You could have messed up way more on the uh, on the live mic. And I didn't. I know. Nathaniel Hackett brought in to be... Uh, <laughs> uh, yes! Oh, man. Uh, oh, well, coach, is we were worried about letting him go live because maybe he'd mess up. So we thought if he pre-recorded, <laughs> it just could be perfect. <laughs> That being oh. said, we all, of course, agree. Oh, yeah, I mean, Russell is. Wilson is a great yeah. fantasy MVP pick. Um, the analysis was good. Was I, just, I, I didn't hear was, anything. No, no, no. After. It was uh, uh. good. <laughs> all right. That we was, love you, Kyle. We do, and I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, Mike, Mike, Mike drives the bus better than both of us. 
Uh, we also have uh, – so Russ, yeah, of course. I mean, Russ just got locked up, goes behind a lot of the more popular quarterbacks, and there there really is it, – it's weird because when you get on to that – you know, you get past the first five names, I'll say, at the quarterback position, which is probably Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes, Justin Herbert, mm -hmm. Lamar Jackson, uh, Kyler Murray. And you get into the should I take Tom Brady um, – some of the other secondary options, like there's no reason you can't take Russ at six. There's no reason you couldn't sure. take him ahead of Lamar or Kyler if you believe in the resurgence in Denver and the opportunity. It just takes a little bit of courage. Sure. You got to be ready to ride. So we have a very special guest for our next fantasy MVP pick. You know him as, you know him as Tyler from Dude Perfect. And uh, Dude Perfect is also going to be doing Thursday night football. They are broadcast. I think starting in week two. Yes, very excited for it. So, over on uh, on the Amazon. Yes, yes, on the internet. Yes, yes. So uh, we did uh, snag Tyler's MVP selection. Um, I'm still a little bit. Uh, I think you're gonna like yeah. it. What's up, Foot Clan? TT from Dude Perfect, the bearded man himself. Uh, if you guys are looking to win a fantasy football championship this year. You're going to want to bank on Trey Lance late round. Look to grab him in the 10th or 11th under the radar, dual threat, potential league MVP this year. And I've got a lot of RPAs. <laughs> so let's, let's, let's raise that Trey Lance stock. Audios, thanks for listening, watching maybe. <laughs> Probably not watching because it's just an audio message. So let's do some ASMR. Uh, yeah, let's go Trey Lance. <laughs> thank you tyler um you don't like whispering though mike i don't it bothers you it, it what, yes. what's an opposite of some asmr people like that yes you're like the inverse where someone makes those sounds uh, you don't like it i believe a misophonia oh i think it's something like that and uh normally the whispering brings me great pain but when it is whispering about my fantasy mvp as well trey lance book it people wondered why is trey lance oh you're just transitioning right yeah, into oh, your yeah. pick we've, here. we've moved forward the bearded brothers we stick together we know we know a good player when we see it for fantasy purposes <laughs> Dude, hold on it, hold on hold what? on i have to i have to jump in here because the definition i'm reading for misophonia yeah. it fits you even better a condition in which <laughs> individuals ex experience intense anger and disgust when they are confronted with sounds made by other human beings yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, okay. Well, that's – yeah, that's you. No yeah. wonder you hate the elevator <laughs> conversation. All right, back to Trey Lance, Mike. So uh, – You have – you have The Bearded Brothers, look, Trey Lance is so interesting to me as, as a fantasy – potential fantasy MVP this year. We've – it's been, you know, the whole offseason talking about it. He's going to run the ball. Two starts turned into 24 rushing attempts and 120 rushing yards. Like, those are absolutely outrageous numbers, even if – he doesn't hit a huge uh, passing touchdown threshold, then he's still going to end up as a top 10 fantasy wide receiver. The question is, if if he does, if he can produce with his arm and he has elite talent around him, if he can produce, then he catapults into the top five. So I, I'm all about this pick. The, the only reason he wasn't a my guy is because he was going to be my fantasy football MVP. Jason. Which, and the, I, I think in... You kind of touched on it there, Andy, the interesting discussion of for this fantasy MVP show, I don't think we've ever highlighted three quarterbacks. So to me, we, the the idea of drafting Mahomes or Herbert, even though it's like they're so good, it's so enticing, I see no reason to do that mm -hmm. when, when you can get Hurts, Trey Lance, and uh, Russell Wilson in those middle rounds and even like – it, Tyler's perspective coming from the home league of like Trey Lance is going to go late in home leagues. Like he, the people who aren't as just insane about fantasy football aren't looking at the true upside of Trey Lance. They're scared about is he going to get replaced by Jimmy Garoppolo. So I just this year in particular with these with these guys going later over the, the these pocket passers at the top, I see no reason to take them. I a couple things about Trey Lance. Number one, I think you have to look at him through the lens of what Jalen Hurts was able to do last year. Jalen Hurts was the 26th best passer by way of completion percentage. 
So this wasn't the uh, hugely successful, hyper accurate year for Jalen Hurts. He, you know, he passed for thirty one hundred yards. Um, what sixteen touchdowns or something? I mean, very few. Still, the most, if you know, one of the most consistent fantasy mm -hmm. outputs of the quarterback position. So that is really the. That's the argument in favor. I have a little more concern about some turnover stuff with, with Trey Lance. We'll see what happens on the field. I'm not really worried about him being replaced outside of injury. Sure. So uh, with that, you know, and then the confidence of Shanahan, the success of the team, um, the weapons, right, far better than Jalen Hurts had. Uh, Brandon Ayuk, Debo Samuel, Greg Kittle. Um, Who? Greg Kittle again? Did I just do again? Greg again? <laughs> Very nice. Why is this happening I, to me? I don't know, but Gregory it's, a, Kittle. it's the same name. You did Greg Kittle last time. I don't know why that happened. His you brother, uh, is Gregory. This, is this a Dulcich thing? It is a, it is a Dulcich thing. It has you, to be. You got him burned in the back of your brain then, huh? Yeah, it's a dull you ready to situation ride? here. Uh, my fantasy football MVP following up Mike's Trey Lance pick. I like it. I'm going with the big boy. Okay. I'm going with Derek... Henry, okay, good for you. Have courage. I mean, this uh, <laughs> give us courage. <laughs> there is a time in your life you have to accept the truth. I'm, I'm all in on Derrick Henry. I don't really understand the fear. Um, you don't get in the way of Derrick Henry when you're on the field, and you shouldn't get in the way of drafting him at the top of your drafts. I've taken him at number three every chance I get. He's the offense for the Tennessee Titans who are were the number one seed last season. Um, no one stopped him for years. He could only stop himself. Derrick Henry's the only one that can defend against himself. That's true. And that was through the injury. You know, you, you have to go back. I won't give you the whole resume of last year, but six RB1 performances in a row, including three number one overall finishes on a 464 carry pace through week seven. Um, somehow finished third in evaded tackles despite playing eight games on the season. And we have a history of running backs of his kind being dominant beyond the age he's at. He is 28 years old, won't turn 29 till January. Priest Holmes, two most dominant seasons ever, 28 and 29. Marshall Falk at 28, number one overall. Tiki Barber, number one at 28. Sean Alexander, number one at 28. LT did it. Westbrook, Forte, Marshawn Lynch. I mean, at a minimum, you have to say, okay, this is, you got the Marshawn situation yeah. with Derrick Henry. Um, he is a, he's another type of human being, and we saw him. It, this is the privilege that we had. We got to see him come back last year. And, you know, I've talked to, you know, Matthew Betts, we've talked to him. We've talked to other MDs that have really said this re-injury risk is minuscule. Um, it's not Im it's not impossible, but the injury risk of Christian McCaffrey, who's Dal being drafted Dalvin ahead Cook. of him, Dalvin Cook. Yeah, so, so Derrick Henry to me, I just took him at eight in a draft this morning. Oh, that's delightful. So, in my opinion, Derrick Henry is going to be the, oh, of course he was the MVP, MVP of the year. Yeah, I, I will say this. We had our listener league, and I was drafting at the third spot, and that is where I took Derrick Henry because I agree with you. We make so much about you've got to have the courage to draft Christian McCaffrey because when he's on the field, he's been so good. He did not score as much as Derrick Henry. Jonathan Taylor didn't score as much as – Derrick Henry last year. Derrick Henry is an outlier of a human being. And so when I'm betting against injury or I'm betting against non pass catching running backs, I make room for outliers. And so I am with you, uh, Andy. I think Derrick Henry is has been a forgotten man due to fear. And what's weird is that that Christian McCaffrey didn't come back from injury and is being drafted ahead of him everywhere. Derrick Henry did and you didn't see McCaffrey do what Derrick Henry did last year. So it's a little bit of a bewildering thing, um, maybe in a uh, risk averse with the pass catching and yeah. setting that foundation. But I think Derrick Henry has a chance to be your fantasy MVP. All right. My fantasy MVP 
is Javante Williams, superstar running back for the Denver Broncos. He is a young. That's, that's quite the proclamation. It, 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 but everybody is knows that in it. the future. Yeah. It, it, yes. By by the end of his career, he's going to be one of the best fantasy football running backs, one of the best running backs of this time period. And right now, he already is one of the best actual running backs in the league. You look at all of his other metrics, yards after uh, contact, and just uh, evasive elusiveness. He's off the charts everywhere. He was in a 50-50 timeshare last year with Melvin Gordon with a bad offense. He had uh, Teddy Bridgewater and Drew Locke running the show, and he was the running back 17 as a rookie in a 50-50 timeshare with bad quarterback play. So right now he's being drafted at running back 13, and this is why I love Javante Williams. If Javante Williams doesn't – if he gets a 55% timeshare <laughs> – and he doesn't have the breakout campaign that he would have had without Melvin Gordon. Melvin Gordon stays healthy the whole year. If everything goes wrong outside of catastrophic injury for Javante Williams, he was the running back 17 last year. What is he, the running back 15? And you're getting him as a running back 30? He's not killing you. He's not going to be a bad draft pick even if he lets you down. But his upside is different than other it running is. backs upside. First of all, they didn't re-sign Melvin Gordon. Melvin Gordon went from playing on a $16 million two-year contract to waiting the entire offseason and finally coming back for a one-year, $2.5 million deal. He is being talked about, depending on which insider you're looking at, as the backup. You know, he'll be involved, but this is Javante as the leader now. And he is... 22 years old. This is a big deal for running backs. Really, really good running backs at that age is part of why I like Brees Hall so much as a true 21-year-old is that here's the second-year running backs in their age 22 season since 2000 who saw at least 240 opportunities. Now, that's how many opportunities he had last year. So this isn't some outrageous number. They averaged 17.4 fantasy points per game which would have been the running back four last year. More than 65% of them are top five on a points-per-game basis. I don't think it is unreasonable to think that he can play his way with Melvin Gordon not getting injured to being a top 10 running back easily with Russell Wilson at the helm and the fact that the, the box is not going to be stacked against such a great running back. And they get so many – they're either in matchups where the over-unders are going to be like – you know, 52 and a half points, or they've got games against the Seahawks, the Texans, the Jets, the Panthers, where they're just going to be running You're the ball. Beat them up. Javante Williams, I just think there's very little risk and enormous reward for being a true league winning MVP. Javante's Inferno. Yeah. Yeah. Setting the field on fire. Um, he's, he's certainly like you brought him up as your fantasy MVP a few weeks ago, and I was jealous because he stands out as the player that when you mix draft capital, you know, you talk about Derrick Henry, you can get him at eight, you can get him at nine, you can get him at 10. Like Javante is being drafted as the running back 13. There is such an opportunity there to, you know, and, and Melvin Gordon's come out and said they want him to be the guy, right? I mean, and Melvin, unfortunately, he's not peaking, right? Like you can't, nothing you can do at this point as a running back is going to, steal this opportunity away from Javante Williams. You're just going to be a compliment. And if he really falls into pure compliment mode, you'll be talking about him like a Tony Pollard. You'll be talking about him like a true backup situation, and that would be glorious for your prediction. Yeah, before Melvin Gordon signed, our first early running back ranking yep. show, he was the running back six. That was where he, you know, and now obviously Melvin Gordon's there and, and we're all worried, but. Got him at four. Yeah, the upside is is still absolutely there. All right, that is going to do it for today's Fantasy MVP episode. Hope you enjoyed it. Share your MVP with us. If you're drafting, like we are, uh, this weekend we have our big draft uh, Friday night for our League of Record, uh, and then a lot of you drafting Saturday, Sunday, on Labor Day Monday. The UDK, it's available. You can grab it. It is not too late to get in there, print a cheat sheet out, Mark your favorite players, hide your keepers, whatever the case may be. We made a, a brand new cheat sheet creator this year that makes it super simple to be prepared, to not get overwhelmed, not go into tilt mode, 
and freak out <laughs> during the draft. UltimateDraftKid.com. And don't forget that the Megala Bowl leagues will be starting this weekend, Sunday, Labor Day, Monday. The drafts will be going. So go to Megalabowl.com if you want to join our community leagues. Winner plays in the Listener League next year. It's going to be fun. Ladies and gentlemen, one week from today, it will be football time. See you tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.